Okay, so there are new photos. Um, let me briefly describe uh, what's going on here so that you know how to take advantage of the new features. Okay, so if you go into configure and then video options, you will notice that there's an effect thing now. And basically, these are the options and what they can do. The names for these are largely terrible. And if you have suggestions, I'm open to changing them. Uh, if something's going to be more intuitive or make more sense. But so basically, high precision is essentially the old default. Floating point positioning, um, a clean uh, you know, point upscale and uh, bilinear downsampling for a clean stretched image, but that's floating point positioning. If you do pixel shader, that's Libra shader, and you can specify a path in, you know, for this shader path in the INI file. And so in the assets folder, I've actually included the complete RetroArch set of shaders. And the ones that I included, I tweaked the lots and the CRT Royale ones because I don't like the, you know, vin the vig uh, vignetting in, in the corners, like the rounded, you know, corners. I think it looks fucking stupid. So in, in the configuration for those, I actually got rid of those dumb, you know, rounded corners. So that's pixel shader. Okay, so then unfiltered is basically just no uh, bilinear filtering at all. Clean filter. This is actually basically just like a native resolution frame buffer. So technically this actually uses a little bit less RAM than the previous options, but you're going to see some aliasing probably just, just due to uh, the fact that there's no filtering on it at all whatsoever. And this is also integer positioning, not floating point positioning. Okay, so this is integer scaling underscan, so meaning that it's a, it's a clean integer multiplier stretch. And if it doesn't fit exactly uh, the dimensions of the screen, it's just gonna be smaller. So some, you know, so you so you'll see basically some black space on the you know sides and, and top and bottom depending on how it works out. Integer scaling overscan is an integer multiple scaling up, and if it doesn't fit, it's just going to basically be cut off, you know, overscanning. And then finally, we have filtered. Um, which is basically kind of like the uh, high uh, precision option, only it's integer positioning. So, so we basically have the, um, you know, integer upscale and bilinear downsampling for, for, for a clean stretch with no aliasing, but um, it has integer positioning instead of floating point positioning. So all of these options, you know, they give you a lot there. And, and even if you do like integer scaling over scan and it doesn't fit, you can always use the horizontal and vertical offsets to shift stuff around. Uh, so th those are the settings. Um, and yeah, I went through to, you, I mean, you can see in the readme file, but I mean, I changed a lot. It's actually a pretty substantial uh, version of this really. But like this is kind of getting, I, I think, this is dangerously close to version 1.0, where it's pretty much there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost getting to the point where it's like, yeah, I mean, I could, I could improve things, but I'm, you know, fairly happy with it. Um, there, there, there is other interesting stuff uh, besides the the shader stuff. So. Um, but first, let me. So, so see how. In the, in the INI file, the shader path, it's just basically in assets, shaders, in there, I just basically dumped the whole RetroArch shader collection. And so, so you can change it, although just note though, that Libra shader is beta software. It has, it, it ha it's not perfect, it, ha it still has problems. And so, um, at least with Direct3D11, I don't even know if all the shaders even work. I've tried lots, 
I've tried CRT Royale. The thing is, too, CRT Royale, it's just fucking slow. It's a piece of shit. I mean, it looks good, but it, it's horrifically slow. And the, and the thing that's terrible is it just gets exponentially slower as you increase the native uh, resolution that, that you're um, you know applying the effect to. And so if you're playing like super ultra wide or something, it's just a larger internal resolution that, that's scaling up and, and it's and the performance is actually pretty horrific. That's why I've just I just picked lots for the um, the default it, it, that that'll be the default shader. Um, the the Libra shader guy is looking at optimizations and looking at um, I, he's working on direct 3d12 and I might actually switch over my engine to direct 3d12 uh, pretty soon probably before Samurai Shodown 2 is done. If that if that gets more performance out of it, if it helps CRT Royale and others, I, I think it'll probably be worth doing. So, okay, so other than the graphics junk, you can just see that there have been like a lot of really nice quality of life uh, improvements here. I mean, like, um, so basically the game has two different code paths for integer positioning and floating point positioning now. So integer positioning is way better than it was before. The game was originally designed around floating point positioning. And so integer positioning was kind of a second class citizen, but now they're both really good and, and it feels good. Um, enemies can now uh, follow you across multiple floor heights. So if you're standing on things, they will jump up and attack you. I ported over Samurai Shodown 2's new camera code. And you'll notice that there's just a lot of awesome, subtle improvements to the parallax behavior. It's just, it's just a better camera system. It's just, it's just, it's just better. Um, the bandits, you know, Elgato, Hollywood, they won't slide, attack you if uh, you're above them on a higher floor height. Uh, the, the, the fat guys shouldn't airball as much anymore. They should try to get closer to you before headbutting you. And um, all of the enemies now are changed. So before, there was basically one common value that was used for the Z axis movement and the X axis movement of all of the enemies. They basically all kind of moved at the same speed. But now they actually use the speed from their character templates. So they basically move at the same speed they would move at as if you were controlling them. And so it spices things up a bit because... Elgato and Hollywood, for example, like they're they're crafty little bastards. You know, they they move pretty fast. Yeah, I just fixed just miscellaneous bugs that I found. There were a couple of crash bugs that I found, um, and and just and just minutia. But but this is a really nice release. Uh, just note though that I have not thoroughly tested CRT behavior, so. If, if, if you're a groovy main person, I, I would probably hold off on this because cause I, I need to set aside, you know, a couple of hours just to go through all that and make sure that nothing broke there because a lot of shit did change. So here we go. We finally have uh, CRT simulation shaders in Final Fight. Uh, 